All right, Matt LeMay here with the Tamiya Cloudbuster Black Edition, and I've got it all built. And uh, if you haven't seen the first video, um, kind of the unboxing and just taking a look at the parts and stuff, um, go ahead and take a look at that. But yeah, as discussed in the first video, this is the same exact truck as the Super Cloudbuster. The only differences are the color schemes. And I gotta say, they just, this thing looks awesome. When I bought this truck, my original plan was to go ahead and not even use the decals, paint the body. I was going to do a, maybe a Samson 1 body or something like that. And um, I was going to go ahead and, and take all these red parts. I've got a Super Quad Buster that was in the last video I showed you. And um, that I painted the body to look like an original Quad Buster. And I had tracked down red parts, original red parts, for that truck, just because I, and, and the white rims and everything for that truck, just because I really like the look of the original Cloudbuster. And honestly, I, I never really liked the look of the um, Super Cloudbuster. Just, it, I just never liked it. And um, while I wanted a Cloudbuster, I wanted one that looked good. So anyway, yeah, I was gonna do all that and, after getting this truck and seeing the decals, how they're kind of like a, an aluminum slash chrome, and, I mean, it looks great. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna have to go get another Claude Buster so that I can make a retro actual monster truck because this looks too good to, um, to just remove all these decals. And so I think it'll be really cool um, and it, it, it just looks good. I think it'd be really cool to have in my arsenal the original looking Claude Buster, and it's still a Super Claude, and then the Black Edition Claude Buster, which has the same style decals, except it doesn't have the actual man busting Claudes, right? Um, it's got this, you know, Super Mario Brother type font, which I'm still not a fan of that font, but um, it, the color wise and stuff, it does look good on this truck. So here it is. Um, I was gonna go ahead and break out the automotive paints and go ahead and, and paint the body black, clear coat it, and then put the decals on when I decided to, to use the decals. But the more I thought about it, you know, I didn't paint the body at all. I just left it like it was, which is, it's not quite a flat black, but it's like a semi-gloss black. It's certainly not as shiny as it would have been if I sprayed House of Color Clear on it. But I decided to leave it like this because honestly, I, I don't think the shiny body would have really popped as well, you know, in contrast to these chrome decals. This, this untouched body, the black, I mean, it looks really good with these chrome decals. These, these chrome decals and this red, I mean, they just pop. Man, it looks good. So, um, yeah, I mean, this was such an easy build because, again, I didn't even paint the body. And, well, I take that back. I did paint silver, you know, around the windows, doing the trim and stuff like that, the door handles. I painted some black on the grill, as you can see here. It's just some black in between the grates. I just painted it on there and used a paper towel wiped off to uh, keep this clear. What I'm probably going to do, I haven't done yet, I'm, I'm debating on whether or not to paint 4x4x4 four by four by four red. I think it might be a nice highlight. I just, I'm not sure yet. I also painted the um, front marker lights. There are no rear marker lights. It's got stickers for the, um, the tail lights and reverse lights and stuff. They, they've got stickers for those. Chrome Super Claude Buster sticker here, Mudbog 3 sticker there. Yeah, it's a, it's a great looking truck. And I decided to go with the newer style um, blower scoop on this one. It does have a, a, a little bit of a blower sticking out of the hood and it's got that larger, um, more aggressive looking scoop. And it looks pretty cool on this truck. I really like it. The, uh, so some of the differences in color, obviously the body and the decals. The body's black and the decals obviously are different from any other Claude Buster. 
They're very similar to the original Quad Buster with this design where the stripe goes all the way down here and it says a real powerhouse on it. So that's very similar, but obviously the colors are different. Now, the, the light bucket cover fronts here, instead of being white, they're actually black, which is really cool. They look good with um, these decals on there, look really nice. And then obviously the shocks, the shocks, um, the front bumper, the braces under here, they're all red. The, the rod ends are all red and it just looks awesome. I mean, it, it, with this body on it, they really did a great job. And then you add the, the, like the, the black chrome wheels. Oh my gosh, this thing just looks amazing. Yeah, it's a really cool looking truck. There's, there's no way I can bring myself to just stripping this down and painting it another color. Just can't. Looks great. So, um, yeah, uh, as far as what the truck consists of, the actual parts and everything, it's the same as the Super Quad Buster. Um, I know in the last video I mentioned how, you know, when I was buying it, I was unsure about the, the main axle gearboxes here. If, if these axle tubes, it said something about a one piece axle. So, I mean, I don't know what they meant by that. These just screw on, these axle tubes screw on to the main chunk here, just like, just like the Super Quad Buster does. So you can, if you really want to, get the aluminum tubes to go on the axles. And I mean, it's, it's, it's the same. So now, <clears throat> This is pretty much, this is a box stock Claude Buster. Now the Claude Buster does come with an electronic speed controller and two brushed motors. One speed controller has two sets of wires and it runs both the motors. And, uh, but it does not come with a radio system and it does not come with a steering servo. However, it does use a single steering servo just like the Super Claude Buster did or does and just like the original Claude Buster did. Now, I know a lot of people complain about the steering and by all means using a double servo setup on the actual axles would be best. I mean, it's going to give the crispest, crispest, the most crisp steering response, response uh, possible. You'll be able to mix it in the radio and you'll be able to adjust on the fly, you know, how much rear steering as opposed to front. And that's, that's awesome. And on my next quad, I'm going to do that. I'm kind of a, a purist, I guess you would call it, when it comes to um, certain RC vehicles. And I just can't bring myself to modify this truck. I want to keep this truck forever like it is. Because it is more than drivable with a single servo setup. Now, you do have to take a little bit to get the adjustments perfect on the steering. If the linkages aren't perfect and everything isn't adjusted perfectly, then it's it's a bear to drive. It'll steer way more in one direction than it will the other direction. You've got to tighten down the servo savers quite a bit, almost all the way, or else again, there's way too much slop and it just doesn't want to steer. One of the um, things that, it's not really a modification, just an adjustment, I guess, um, that had to be done was on the front arm here, this ball joint, there's, there's three positions on this, three holes. It was The instructions tell you to put it on the center hole and then same on the rear. So the front and rear both on the center holes. Well, that doesn't work out because it gives you almost zero steering up front, which is ridiculous, but that's what it does. So if you move this one to the forwardmost hole, which is also the outside hole on the arm, so the forwardmost hole, well that gives you more throw in the front steering, right? So that helps out quite a bit, but the problem with that then is it'll steer really, really far to the right and it won't steer to the left because the lip on this rod end hits against that lock nut. So when you go to steer right, it binds and it only goes about that far. So as you can see, what I did here is I bent the linkage. See how the linkage is bent just a little bit? Of course, you have to lengthen this a little bit. Just unscrew the ends a tiny bit once you uh, bend it. But then it clears. But without that being bent and this being in the forwardmost hole, the end lip of that rod end, and I'm going to show you right here, this part right here, 
would hit right here and it would bind the front steering. I'm just gonna discuss what I have for the electronics real quick, okay? I'm just using um, a high-tech, um, the receiver is the Axion 2 receiver and I'm using um, a high-tech uh, Lynx 4S controller. Man, like this. It looks really good with the body. I know that's ridiculous to worry about that, but man, it looks good. So, in the spirit of that, I went ahead and used a high-tech steering servo as well, and it is made of red aluminum, and it looks really good. So the electronic speed control that is in the truck, something you have to keep in mind when you first connect it, if you, if you connect all the wires color-coded like they should be, then it's not going to work out because the the axles are, say, reversed. You know, one's going one way, one's going the other way, and both tires are turning toward the inside of the truck, and the truck won't move. You'll just bind up the, the thing and probably break some gears. So you will want to reverse the wires on one of the motors. Now, I reversed the wires on the, looks like, on the rear motor. So on the rear motor, I have green going to yellow, and I have yellow going to blue. On the front motor, I have yellow to yellow, and blue to green. In there. So one of the things you're going to want to do, when you're going to want to make sure of when you're setting up the steering for this truck, is that this right here is straight up and down. Before you set any linkages, make sure that's straight up and down. If it's like cocked like this and then you start setting linkages for the truck to go straight, it's not going to steer equally in both directions. Same goes if it's like this and then you set the linkage for the truck to go straight. It won't steer evenly in both directions. So you'll need to make absolute certain that that is straight up and down. Once you do that, and then you can do your best setting the linkages on here, okay, adjusting these to get these levers here, which are also the servo saver. You can see where it connects up there and then here to get those straight. And then once you do that, you get those straight with that straight up and down, and then you can adjust these linkages here to get the tires actually moving straight. If you do that and you get them set up straight, and then you can fine tune it just barely with the controller if you need to, then it does a really good job. It actually steers. Now, granted, you go full throttle, the front wheels wanna straighten out, and uh, I mean, it still has its issues. And the servo savers, it's not perfect by any means, but by all means, it is drivable and it is fun. This truck is just fun. I mean, there's no other way to describe this truck. Does it go 40 miles an hour and can I jump 500 feet in the air with it? No, I can't. Um, it doesn't. It's not made for that. There's not much suspension travel on it at all. I mean, that's that's it. That's all you got. So there's not a lot of suspension travel on the truck. The truck isn't designed to do that. The truck doesn't have oil dampeners. It has friction dampeners. Um, but what it's designed to do, you got to figure when the Claude Buster was made, it was like when, you know, 80s and 90s monster trucks, before they were jumping and clearing cars, when they were just kind of popping a wheelie to get on the cars and then they sat on the cars and they opened up their hood and they some of them tilted the bed the guy got out and he waved and everybody took pictures and then he put it back down all the lights were on him i mean man those in my in my opinion those are the best monster truck days ever they were actual trucks and they blinged them out like crazy and it was about show it was about how good their truck looked it wasn't about how fast it was it was about how good it looked and, um, and how big it was. So yeah, that's what this is designed after. And man, it really does give you that feeling. So I was in my house last night and I just had two of my shoes and I threw them in the living room floor. And I would just go up to the shoe slowly and then I'd goose it right as I got in the shoe and the thing would hop right over them and it hit and it would bounce a little bit. Oh my gosh, it reminded me of being a kid when I had my black foot in the basement doing the same thing except this i mean this just was it looked like when i was at the centrum 
watching monster trucks. Oh man, it, it was awesome. It, it, it really is awesome. And uh, again, it, it, this is a super cloud buster. So if you've got the super cloud buster, if you like that look better, it's gonna behave the same exact way. Just the main thing about this truck is you have to get the steering linkages set up correctly. Now it's not that much money to go out and get the attachments that go on the front and the rear to, to mount the servos to the axles. Um, and like I said, I'll, I'll be doing another monster truck where I do that, but for this one, I'm not going to race it. I'm just going to have fun with it. I don't see the need. You know, I, I really don't. It, it's, it's a fun truck as it is. And I, I, like I said, I'm a bit of a RC purist. I, I have trucks that I like to modify, but on the other hand, when they're kind of vintage and they mean something to me emotionally, I just want to leave them in stock form. I want to experience what they designed. And uh, I think that's what it boils down to me is ex experiencing the characteristics of the truck, the way, for instance, in this case, Tamiya intended for the truck to handle. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. So if, if you grew up with the Clodbuster and the Blackfoot and, you know, 80s monster trucks and man, you're going to love this truck. Uh, I don't know how I went so many years. Um, I just got the Super Cloud Buster, I don't know, what, a year or two ago or something like that. And I don't know how I went so long without getting a Cloud Buster. I mean, these things are awesome. So cool. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take this thing outside. And uh, you know what? I think what I'll do first is um, I'm going to cut, uh, I'm going to stop this video here and uh, make another video of it running. I'll go ahead and run it inside first. So you, just to show you the steering of the truck and you know a few characteristics like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it in the living room, run it a little bit, and then we'll go outside. 